by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Jay Cohn. House Speaker Paul Ryan is hanging up his hat. After nearly two decades in Congress, Ryan says he wants to spend more time with his family. His decision, months in the making, according to those close to the Speaker. The Wisconsin Republican ushered in the largest tax reform package in history, but also has struggled to unite factions within his own party. CBS's Angelica Alvarez has more from Capitol Hill. This is a job that does not last forever. House Speaker Paul Ryan told his colleagues and constituents he's leaving Capitol Hill when his term ends in January. What I realize is if I am here for one more term, my kids will only have ever known me as a weekend dad. The 48-year-old Wisconsin Republican was reluctant to accept the speakership, but now calls it one of the greatest honors of his life. Ryan counts comprehensive tax reform as his top legislative achievement. So do his colleagues. He's why we have a new tax code for families, and he's why our military is being How built. Much Ryan received a standing ovation from members of his conference, and many shed tears. It's tough for me personally because um, he's the one that got me here. Ryan isn't alone in his decision to leave. Several dozen of his fellow Republicans aren't running for re-election this November. GOP lawmakers downplayed concerns of possibly losing their majority and their speaker. We'll be okay. We'll be got great leadership. Our bench is deep. Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy and Majority Whip Steve Scalise are seen as potential frontrunners for the speakership Thank should Republicans much. hold a majority in the next Congress. Angelica Alvarez, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Now, Speaker Ryan sits down tomorrow morning with Gail King on CBS This Morning in his first in-depth interview since announcing his retirement from Congress. Campaign season in full swing here in Montana. The state's primary election now less than two months away. And one of the top races this spring is for Montana's only U.S. House seat. Six Democrats are competing for their party's nomination to challenge incumbent Republican Greg Gianforte. Tonight, MTN's Mike Dennison looks at the three earliest entries in the contest. Billings attorney John Heenan was the first Democrat in the race against Republican Greg Gianforte, hitting the campaign trail last summer. I'm meeting with everyone, not just uh, um, living inside a bubble, and I think that's... Uh, how you win in November. Heenan grew up in the Philadelphia area and came here as a student in 1997 at the University of Montana. He's been here ever since. In his work as a lawyer, he's won large judgments for people in lawsuits against banks and insurance companies and says Montana's need a street fighter who can battle interests he says are squelching the American dream. My career has been about representing people against powerful corporations, against powerful entities. I want to represent the people of Montana all day long because they're getting ripped off, they're getting fleeced. Grant Keir is a former director of the Five Valleys Land Trust in Missoula. He says he spent his career as a problem solver and would bring that practical approach to Congress. Keir says Gianforte doesn't really listen to people he disagrees with, and that's a sharp contrast with him. The folks that I've worked with have been uh, across the political spectrum. I've helped farm and ranch families expand their businesses. I've helped small communities uh, acquire public lands to expand their economy and recreation and tourism. And I've helped folks in Montana who want more access to their rivers and public lands acquire public lands to have that access. Those are core values of everyday Montanans. Keir grew up in Kansas and Colorado and moved to Montana 13 years ago. Former State Representative Kathleen Williams of Bozeman also has a career background in land policy. She most recently worked as Associate Director of the Western Landowners Alliance, which promotes responsible rural land ownership and management. Williams calls herself a unique Democrat who has worked with business, agriculture, and other lawmakers to advance policies that help all Montanans. I think that's what's really going to be competitive against Gianforte is that policy experience and that breadth and depth of knowledge and experience. He is not serving us in the way that I believe Montanans deserve. And I think Montanans will realize that and want to choose a candidate that they trust. Williams moved to Montana in 1995 and grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. Tomorrow, we'll meet three other Democrats in this crowded field. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Thank you, Mike. The absentee ballots for Montana's June 5th primary will go out in the mail four weeks from now. The U.S. is weighing its possible response to Syria's alleged chemical attack on its people over the weekend. The situation furthering souring the U.S.-Russia relations. 
White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders today said the president holds Syria and Russia responsible for last weekend's attack on the rebel-held town of Douma that killed dozens of Syrian civilians. In an extraordinary tweet early this morning, President Trump warned Russia, quote, get ready for nice and new and smart missiles to hit the region. Meanwhile, overseas, British Prime Minister Theresa May plans to hold an emergency cabinet meeting Thursday to discuss possible military action. President Trump continues to stir speculation that he will try to fire special counsel Robert Mueller and stop the investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. On Capitol Hill, a bipartisan group of senators hopes to introduce legislation to ensure that special counsel investigators are free to independently do their work. By law, a special counsel can only be removed by the attorney general. But Jeff Sessions, re Sessions recused himself from the investigation last March, leaving Deputy AG as the only one who can dismiss Mueller. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg on Capitol Hill for a second day today. He was testifying before the House Energy and Commerce Committee, where he said he expects new regulation of his industry. And he again assured lawmakers that Facebook already is scouring tens of thousands of apps to make sure they did not misuse data. The committee chairman says his panel will soon widen its lens to see how other tech companies are handling security. A crash on the Billings West End tonight sends a motorcyclist to the hospital with serious injuries. This accident happened near the Holiday gas station at 20th and King. Billings Police Sergeant Scott Conrad tells Q2 that a white Chevy was heading south, turning left into the Holiday station when it was struck broadside by the motorcycle as it headed north. The 33-year-old male rider has severe injuries, according to Conrad. The 25-year-old driver of the car was not injured. Conrad said he does not believe that speed or alcohol were involved. He did say it appears that the motorcyclist was run over by the vehicle immediately following that crash. The motor motorists need to be aware that area will remain closed tonight for some time. The first of three candidates vying to become the next Billings School Superintendent met with the Board of Trustees tonight. Greg Upham met with the school board for about an hour after meeting with community members this afternoon. He's been the District Assistant Superintendent for the Helena Public Schools since 2012. He started his education career in 1988 with the Browning Public Schools. Upham talked about what he wants the community and the board to know about him. I'm an upfront, honest, fair person. I like kids. I like education. I like every, every bit of it. Um, I'm a very people-type person. Uh, I, I can't wait to, if I'm selected, I can't wait to get to know the community and, and meet the people in it and, uh, and just get going. I feel very fortunate to have, to have been selected as a finalist and, and get to this level. And uh, if I'm given the opportunity to lead Billings Public Schools, that would be a great opportunity and, and they'll, they'll see a job well done. Greg Upham is the only finalist from Montana. Rebecca Salato, Chief Operating Officer for an education company in California, and Ross Kaysen, a school superintendent in New Jersey, are set for interviews Thursday and Friday. Superintendent Terry Bauck will retire at the end of this school year. Authorities today have identified the Billings man who was shot and killed inside a casino early Tuesday morning. 44-year-old Sean Hubbard of Billings shot after threatening patrons and ignoring police orders to stop. Authorities now know that weapon was a pellet gun, but one eyewitness who was in the casino says it was clear that the man wanted to die. This incident unfolded early Tuesday when Hubbard's ex-wife called police, saying he was banging on her door and windows and threatening to rob a casino. Officers soon located Hubbard outside the Lucky Lills on Grand Avenue, where police say he was waving a gun, then went inside the casino. When officers ordered Hubbard to drop his weapon multiple times, he refused. He was shot twice and died later at the hospital. An eyewitness posted on her Facebook page that Hubbard fell on her after he was shot. It says it appeared that Hubbard wanted police to kill him. Hubbard's criminal record includes convictions for illegal drugs and theft in Lewis and Clark and Park counties. Meanwhile, in the wake of two officer-involved shootings here in Billings this week, Police Chief Rich St. John has scheduled another chat with the Chief Session set for tomorrow evening. It's a two-hour session beginning at the Lewis and Clark Middle School from 6 to 8 p.m. tomorrow. The public is invited to share ideas, thoughts, concerns, and suggestions. On the weather front, winter is on its way back, and as Jay said earlier, <laughs> it's time to bury the record, Bob. I think we may do it tomorrow, but we've been tweaking some of the numbers. Now, the kind of snow we're expecting is going to be the very wet, sloppy, heavy stuff that kind of sticks to tree limbs, 
power lines, and if the wind kicks in, we could see some power outages. So just be mindful of that. Threat board, as you see, is still full. We still have a various num amount of uh, snow fall in the area, and here's what we're expecting to see. In most cases, like four to eight inches of snow here in the Billings area. It's just like five to ten inches of snow, at least on the threat board. But I may change. Here's what we're talking about. You'll notice here our forecast model shows some scattered rain showers around Billings at 10 o'clock, and then nothing in the morning. But then by noontime, all of a sudden we get a little rain and rain mixing and changing the snow right over Billings at about noontime. That stuff kicks out of the way, and then another batch of snow moves in later on. So here's where the tweak comes. Look at this. It looks like two of our four computer models show less than an inch of snow for Billings, but the other two show four to maybe seven inches of snow. We'll see what happens tomorrow. We'll have more on the forecast in a few more minutes. All right, thanks, Bob. This week, Montana ranching leaders are in Washington, D.C., working on federal issues that impact their operations and way of life. Tonight, Montana Ag Network's Russell Nimitz shows us why the Endangered Species Act is one of the issues on that list. In Montana, ranchers still utilize both private and federal lands grazing allotments. And back here in Washington, D.C., as part of the Public Lands Council and NCBA Spring Legislative Conference, ranchers have been receiving updates on very important issues that are impacting today's ranching industry. And one of those back here in our nation's capital, all the way here from Big Sky Country, is Vicki Olson, the current chairman of the Montana Public Lands Council from Malta, Montana, and Vicki, a big issue that has really hit home here of late and one that's been in the news again, wild horses. Yes, that has really hit the me media hard, and, but I, I, it really bothers me that they think that wild horses should be on the endangered species list, and especially that particular group. I mean, they single that group out, um, but they are not the Endangered Species Act was never meant for domestic livestock or pets or whatever. And it's just a perfect example of why the Endangered Species Act needs some reform and modernized, as we call it. Well, it's one of those big issues that uh, not just here at the national level, but for folks back home like the Montana PLC, the Montana Stock Growers Association. You guys have been working on these big issues like this for a lot of years now, and it's important to have a presence not just back home in Montana, but here in Washington, too. Yes, I think it does a lot of good for us to come back and talk to the people that actually make the decisions or the rules or, that we have to live with on the ground. And so getting back here and we get to D.C., we're lucky all our legislatures make, make a point to be able to see us every time I've been back here anyway. And then uh, we go see a lot of the agency people and get to go quite up far up the totem pole and visit with them and tell them exactly what's going on on the ground. And I, that stuff we don't see on a daily basis in Montana, but stuff that goes on here that I think our representation here is, is awesome. Well, we appreciate you being with us and we appreciate your candidness and for sharing a little bit of back home common sense, even though we're back here in Washington, D.C. Again, Vicki Olson from Malta, Montana. In Washington, D.C., I'm Russell Nimitz reporting MTN News. All right, thank you, Russ. There are as many as 150 Mustangs on the prior Mountain Wild Horse Range that's near the Montana-Wyoming border. Well, still to come on tonight's 10 o'clock news, a tragic story underscores the urgency in taking those automobile recall notices seriously. And later in sports, MSUB's baseball guys can't catch a break at home, but Scott tells us why it's not so bad. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.